It's nice to be here. Um, David Blake, I am the co-founder and uh, recently named executive chairman of Degreed. We just named a uh, new CEO, but uh, it's good to be here with uh, all of you. So uh, if any of you have had the opportunity to hear me speak sort of at any point, um, you would know the genesis of Degreed got started in asking this question, tell me about your education. And when you ask people that question, they inevitably tell you where they went to university. And I got obsessed with that question when, um, before this was help consulting for a university, we were going through the reaccreditation process, so I was thinking very much about credentials and accreditation and the signaling of it was moving to a competency-based model, so thinking about competencies. It was when really the MOOCs had emerged, and so we had entered this world where we're learning informally and from a diversity of sources over the entirety of our lives. And I had asked a woman, tell me about your education. And she said, oh no, I'm not educated, I didn't go to university. She was like 55 years old. And to think that that framing of I'm not educated because I didn't go to university is something that she had carried for 30 some odd years, it's really just an absurdity. And it's an absurdity that we answer the question, tell me about your education with where you went to university. And I really do believe it's an absurd. Not that university is absurd, uh, but that is an absurd call and response. If I were to ask you, tell me about your health, and you said I ran a marathon 30 years ago, that is an equally absurd uh, response to that. So the, the genesis of Degreed was this question, tell me about your education and the fact that we need to get to a place where we can answer for all of our ongoing education and skills. Now that was six and a half years ago. As we go through this presentation, I'm gonna take you a little bit on our journey. But really in the six and a half years, we've now been able to begin to address that problem for individuals, and now we are really addressing that question at scale. And this is what that looks like. So if you think about the fact that you cannot answer in a codified, universal way what you learned last year or what your current skills are in this moment, that does not get any easier inside an organization of 10,000 people, much less an organization of 200,000 people. If we can't answer for it ourselves, organizations certainly cannot answer for it at scale. And that is the problem that we have squared off with to be able to help organizations begin to have a codified way to answer these questions. There is not a CEO in the world that can answer this question today in a codified way. What skills does my organization have? That's a pretty basic, fundamental question. And there's not a CEO in the world who can answer it. You know, and if you can't answer that, you can't then answer the questions that flow from it and capture the value that flows from it. What skills do we need? Are we closing that gap? You know, where are we mobilizing skills? Did we learn more this year versus last year? They fundamentally cannot answer those questions. But as you look at it, you know, it flows. We, we started from the bottom, the individual, being able to help individuals answer for their education, and now we're doing it at scale with organizations. But they bridge in the middle, and as you look at the, the chart, you can see how HR and chief learning officers, sort of the questions they have to answer, and how it sort of uh, relates back to the individual. And now how we're doing this is we, uh, inside the back half of last year, we launched the ability to certify any skill at any level, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. A little bit more about um, sort of the, the thesis of Degreed. So as I mentioned, sort of came into Degreed right in the context of the Cambrian explosion of content, the MOOCs and Linda and Pluralsight and Udemy and the boot camps and Khan Academy and Code Academy, all these platforms. We saw this explosion of destinations of learning. But what and, uh, and it really was sort of this Cambrian explosion, and it was democratizing, you know, the, the content was being unlocked, it was being accessed, and it was consumer, more and more it was consumer oriented. And so there's all this talk about consumer education. And yet for all of that talk, there was nothing in the market that actually mapped to what the consumer's learning journey actually looks like. As learners, here we are at this conference. 
but we'll all hop on an airplane later today and many of us will pull out a book or listen to a podcast or an audio book. Tomorrow you'll wake up and on the train might read an article. Later you might you know, have a training with your employer. We travel between providers of education, we travel between destinations of education, we travel between modalities of education. We are journeymen on this learning, on this journey of learning, and nothing in the market had mapped to that journey to support people as they travel between the destinations. So that became our role. If we are gonna help people answer for all of their education and skills, we will map to their journey and help support them as they go between the destinations of learning. So this is how we set out to do that. This is the value, you know, why are people going to come to degree and spend time with us as they journey across uh, their, their learning journey? We believe in a world where people can learn from every source. We believe in a world where people get credit for everything that they learn, that it has to be portable, it has to be owned by the individual. If we are truly going to have a model of lifelong, in, lifelong learning, universities can't own it. I'm only at universities for two, four, six, nine years. Employers can't own it. I'm only at employers, on average, now 4.2 years. And even uh, single providers of education, even consumer-oriented platforms can't own it because I learn on Lynda and on TED. I watch YouTube videos and I listen to audiobooks. No one provider of education can own my learning. I have to own it and it has to travel with me. It has to be social. Part of the problem with an ecosystem of learning, even as each individual site gets more social, it is more probable than not that I could have a colleague sitting next to me learning the same thing, but on a different platform, a different provider. For learning to be truly social, it has to be platform agnostic. It has to be elevated so that if I am learning JavaScript on Lynda and my colleague is learning it on Pluralsight, we can engage one with another even though we are in different silos. Pathways. We believe in a world where people should be able to have a goal, an objective, and be able to have a pathway throughout all of the best resources across the ecosystem to achieve their goal, the most efficient, the, most, uh, the shortest path to achieving that aim. We believe in a world where people can certify their skills however or wherever they obtain them. This is very different than any of the other new age alternative credentials in the market. To get a Udacity Nano degree, it's proprietary. I have to go take Udacity's courses. To get a edX MicroMasters, it's proprietary. I have to go and work through the edX platform. We believe in a world where it doesn't matter how or where you developed your skills and your learning, but that there is a consistent and a verifiable way for you to be certified that you have obtained mastery. And ultimately, the, uh, uh, the aim of all of this is to create a universal language for skills. I believe that the market wants to speak the language of skills, but it can't. And so it is left to speak the language of college degrees. And for that to happen, it has to become a truly universal language. There is only one universal credential in the entire world, and that is the college degree. There are other credentials that are ubiquitous. There are other credentials that are valued, that are valuable, but that is not the same thing as universal. And so to, to draw that out, you know, if I tell you that I'm a JD and you tell me that you're an MD, you don't, know, you don't have to know about law and I don't have to know about medicine to know the level of accomplishment. That is the only credential in the entire world that can claim that attribute. All other credentials, not to be mistaken with ubiquity, credentials can be ubiquitous but not be universal. If I tell you that I'm a CPA, you might have an understanding for what that means. But if you're not in that industry, if you don't have exposure to that industry, you might not. If I tell you I'm a GGNA certified, does anyone here have an appreciation for what that might mean? And yet it is ubiquitous and as valuable as a CPA is in its field. So value and ubiquity can't be confused with universality. There is only one universal credential in the world, and that's a college degree. And we have to move to a world where there is a universal language for skills. So we started with the individual. We started helping individuals on their learning journey. 
but knew that if we were going to make this all matter, if we were gonna make this count, if we were gonna make the lifelong learning journey matter, it had to matter with employers, it had to matter in enterprise. And so as we looked to enter the enterprise space, you know, we really knew that we were going to have to bring sort of uh, differentiated value to the organization. We were going to have to be 10x better than what they had before. And this, more than anything else, reveals degreed secrets. This is the secret to our success. The biggest problem in lifelong education, and, and depending on who you're talking to, we put different words to it, but it's engagement, it's persistent, it's completion. Learning is hard. So inside enterprise organizations, um, the biggest problem that they face is engaging people around learning. And we knew if we could bring a 10x better solution to that problem, that we could find success in this market. And then that would give us sort of the value network for this to become a reality. And this is our secret. So what you're looking at is this timeline. On the top is what organizations sort of uh, do to engage people around learning. On the bottom is sort of the map, the timeline of how individuals engage around learning. And this secret came from the world of um, game design. In game design, there's the concept of different sizes of arcs of engagement. And so if you think of a game like a uh, Super Mario Brothers, there's engagement mechanics that last for a second. Breaking a brick, gathering a coin, jumping on a turtle, it's over in one second. So if that's all that game were, left to right, running forever, bricks, coins, turtles, bricks, coins, turtles, brick, coins, turtles, how long would you play that game? Two, three minutes maybe? Five, six minutes maybe, I don't know, but like you wouldn't play that game for two hours. And it might be fun for the two or three minutes you're playing, but you have to then introduce a bigger size of engagement arc if you're gonna get people to play it past five minutes. So those are obstacles, pipes, moving platforms. If that's all the game where I'd play it for 10 minutes, so then they have to introduce bigger arcs. So that's levels. You have to introduce bigger arcs. That's Bowser, the big bads. You have to introduce worlds, and the biggest arc in that is the, the storyline, saving the princess. And in game design, whatever arc you are worst at is where your game breaks. That is where you lose your players. And it doesn't matter which size of arc, whichever arc is the, is the weakest, weakest link in the chain is where you lose your players. And now look at the world of HR. Look at the world of corporate L&D. If you map that out, the different sizes of arcs, if you think about this as a game, it is fundamentally flawed before it's even begun. It's all medium-sized arcs. It's the annual performance review. It's the spring compliance training. It's the fall new manager development. It's all medium-sized arcs. But when you look at how people learn, we learn across the full spectrum. So this was the insight that we brought to corporate um, learning was to map all of the different sizes of arcs together. And what we've been able to accomplish is a 10x better solution. So inside of our clients, uh, our most mature clients, our, our very first enterprise client, they've seen a 7,000% increase in the level of learning engagement inside of their uh, company around non-compliance learning. All right, I'm almost at the uh, end of my time. I'm going to flip through like 10 slides here because I talked too long, but I'm going to get us to the end. All right, well, so this, was, this is the evolution of uh, Degree to GSV. So over the years, um, it's been growing fast. 2015, we were about 40 people. That's what the product looked like. We were about, uh, we had 21 clients. We had about $10 uh, million in bookings. We had sold about half a million seats um, three years ago when we were here and I was on the stage at GSV. 2016. We were about 103 employees, so up from 40 to 103. We then had three offices, our first international office. We really began to work on that personalized experience, the user experience, the engagement. Made it to about $20 million in bookings, um, a million seats sold, 63 enterprise clients. Last year in Salt Lake City, that's one, home to one of our offices. It was fun to have it in Salt Lake. We were 138 employees, the three offices. Uh, and last year is when we introduced skills onto the platform. So going from tracking all of your learning to mapping it back to what skills have you been able to develop. And across all of our clients, we introduced the Lumina framework for competency. And so now we measure everyone against the, that framework and it's consistent across all of our clients. And what that means is getting certified in level four at Bank of America in international tax law is now the exact same thing as being level four at Citigroup, at HSBC, 
you know, at uh, any number of our clients, MasterCard, um, RBC, TD, USAA. And so now there is this interoperable standard and measurement for skills across all of our clients. We made it to about 2 million seats sold last year, 40 million in bookings, 111 clients. This year, we are happy we just uh, announced uh, our last round of financing of 42 million, uh, GSV Acceleration, who's, uh, Deborah's been with us from the very beginning, but proud to have uh, added Al Ventures uh, uh, to our board. And we are now 160 plus people and counting. And this year, it's all about helping now align what are my objectives, what skills are required to accomplish that objective, what is my skill level against that objective, and how do I close that skill gap using all of the best resources across the entire ecosystem. And we are 170 clients now, we have over 3 million uh, seats sold, and just about approaching $100 million in bookings. I'm out of time, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, it's fun to be with you guys again here one more year at GSV. I love doing this and uh, really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much.